Hi guys, it's me and this guy again today, getting ready to read to you the last chapter in A Hair Raising Tale. What do you think, Xander? What's going to happen? Are we going to find Anakin? Are we ever going to figure out if Fletcher gets a real good home? He gets to stay there? What do you think? What do you think? Yes or no? One lick for yes. Zero, zero licks for none. Anyway, I'm going to read to you chapter six. I do believe this is the last chapter. I haven't looked ahead, I promise. Um, Denise had a stuffed animal, a stuffed rabbit, in her backpack. And that chapter was called Band for Life. And Fletcher is going to go to the, the winter festival, but he's not allowed back in school. Hmm. This chapter is called The Twitching Clue. Hmm, twitching. Hmm. Twitching is when you move around a lot and you keep doing the same move. Hmm, I wonder what that means. I couldn't imagine any group less festive than ours as we tracked through the light dusting of snow to the town park. Gwen... And Jill told me to lie down under their plastic top. They position, positioned me just under the snowblower so it looked like I was really a snow globe. Then I put out their computer sign that they had... Excuse me, I read that wrong, guys. Sorry. Then they put out their computer sign that they had laminated. Denise and Isabella came by. Gosh, Another snow globe, said Isabella. James made a snow globe, too. Denise kept her distance from me. Are you keeping that dog, she asked. I heard a rumor that Miss Neville told you to get rid of him. Rude. He's not allowed back in school, said Jill, but, I haven't, but we haven't decided what to do yet. I shivered. Something in her voice made me feel like there really wasn't too much hope. Mm. He looks cold, said Denise. I nodded at her for a moment. I felt she understood a little bit of what I was going through. Oh, that's sweet. She's saying, oh, he looks cold. So maybe she's worrying about him a little bit. Hmm. James's globe can't be as good as ours, said Gwen. We've got a real globe in our snow globe. The real globe is Fletcher, right? Because he is like a real globe. Because uh, he's got that map of the whole world on his body. That's so weird and fun. They were just setting it up when I went by, said Denise, taking a step back from me. I really couldn't see it, but James said he had a real surprise in it. Hmm. Maybe I should go look, said Gwen to Jill. You stay here with Fletcher. Jasper's teeth were chattering. How long does this winter festival go on, he complained. Enjoy it, I said. This might be our, own, our last day of freedom. Oh. My antennas are so cold, I can't feel anything, said Jasper. Well, find some of the, my loose fur and wrap yourself in it, I said. Great idea, said Jasper. He quickly knitted himself little antenna muffs and six tiny little leg warmers. Okay, I'm going to show you this picture here of Jasper. Jasper. He's a pretty good knitter. Hmm. <clears throat> Gwen wasn't gone very long. She came back. She When she came back, she was chewing on something. I could hear the sound of chewing from a long way away. I twitched my nose. The smell was familiar. Nutty, yet spicy. Oh, that's what it said in the last chapter. What are you eating? Jill asked. Peanut butter and salami, said Gwen. Isabella gave me a bite of sandwich. Gave a bite of a sandwich someone gave her. Anyhow... James's snow globe isn't as good as ours. It's all white. I couldn't really see through it, though, because the judges were already looking at it. And this is a piece of salami and peanut butter sandwich. I don't know. I like peanut butter and I like salami, but I don't think I'd like them together. Peanut butter and salami, I yelped. Quiet, Fletcher, said Jill. That was the smell in Anakin's cage, I whispered to Jasper. Somehow... 
Anakin's disappearance is connected with whoever gave Gwen that peanut butter and salami sandwich. I've got to track, track them down. Basset hounds are very good trackers. We're related to bloodhounds. Not now, said Jasper. You're the star of their snow globe. You can't go tracking around. And this is, this right here is Fletcher. And that is his bloodhound cousin. Bloodhounds are pretty cool. I actually saw one one time for real. And it was tracking something down. And when it found it, it made the funniest noise. I've never heard a dog like that before. Um, I will try to find... Um, a video of a, a bloodhound howling because it's a different sound. I'll put it hopefully online and you can see it. Um, okay, here we go. Here come the judges, shouted Jill. Oh no, Mrs. Neville is one of the judges. The judges came over to our site. You're our last entry, said Mrs. Neville. Don't worry, Gwen and Jill, she whispered. I'll be fair. I know this isn't school grounds and you work so hard on this. Here is... Here is what they made. And it says, at last a snow globe that is really a globe. There he is. Isn't he so cute? Anyway. Um, the judges walked around me slowly, looking at the way I was lying under the plastic, at the way the snowflakes were gently falling on me. Why, this is very interesting, said one. It must be the year of the snow globe. He's a real globe said Jill. See our sign? Very original, said another judge. They wrote something down. I think we need to confer, said Mrs. Neville. That means talk privately. Is it, is it possible to move your entry, asked a third judge. <laughs> yes, said Gwen. Fletcher can move when he has to. The judges formed a little circle and whispered. I flicked my ears to try to hear, but I couldn't make out their words. It was also hard to hear because Jasper was so nervous he was like a jumping jack. Finally, the judges split apart. We'd like to bring your entry up to the platform, said Mrs. Neville. Oh, that sounds good. Gwen and Jill dismantled the plastic bubble. I was anxious to see the other snow to see what other snow globe there was. It was under the same kind of plastic cover, but it was all white. My nose switched, twitched. Hmm. I'm trying to twitch my nose. Hmm. 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 No, I, I can move my mouth, but not my nose. That's weird. I smelled peanut butter and salami and something else. Then I saw James. His was the other entry. I sniffed deeply. I detected a weird aroma, a mix of salami and peanut butter and just a whiff of rabbit. Oh, no. You better not have taken the Anakin, James. The judges went to the microphone. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, boys and girls, for the first time at the Winter Festival, we have a tie for a winning entry. They are both snow globes, and we thought we'd bring it up to the audience applause. Our first entry is at last a snow globe that's really a globe. You have to look closely at the dog spots, but it is a globe within a globe. The audience burst into applause for me. I wagged my stubby tail. My mother would have been proud. I was at a show and I was getting applause. Oh, poor Fletcher. I love that he loves that about himself. I'm so, so glad that he's happy for himself and proud of himself for once. The audience, um, oh, I read that part already. Our second entry, said the judge, is also original. It's an all white number. James came on stage carrying his snow globe. I smelled his breath peanut butter and salami. The smell that had been on Anakin's cage. James had been at the table for the first, at the first time I ever heard anyone ask for peanut butter and salami. There was just a smattering of applause. What's so original about snow and a snow globe? Shouted one of the audience members. They don't like it as much. I can pull a rabbit out of my globe, said James. James? It's a magic globe. He reached in and pulled a rabbit out by his ears. Oh my goodness. Here's the picture. Look at Anakin's face. Oh, he does not look like a happy camper. Anakin, I shrieked over the applause. You're alive. Oh my goodness, said Jasper, doing a triple flip. We're saved. 
Hey, shouted Gwen, tapping her braces. That's our classroom rabbit. James took it from our classroom and poor Fletcher got blamed. This isn't your rabbit, said James, pulling, putting the rabbit back into the globe. I got him from the pet store. They had lots of white rabbits. Where's your receipt? asked and demanded Jill. Oh, that sneaky James. I paid cash, said James smugly. Who brings a receipt for a rabbit in a winter festival? Hmm. Mrs. Neville looked close, closer. I don't know, she said. He looks a little like Anakin, but the truth is, rabbits do look alike. Anakin, I begged. They're sending me back to the pound because they think I taught you. I know it was James. Help me. Hey, said Anakin, hopping into my snow globe and giving me a dirty look. That kid feeds me peanut butter and salami. He changes my cage. It's not a bad exchange. But, but, I sputtered. I couldn't believe how unfair it was. I had a culprit, but he was trying to get away with it. I had a great idea. Jasper, jump! No, I told you before, where you go, if, where you go, I go. If you go back to the pound, I'm going with you. I whispered that if he did exactly what I told him to do, we'd be safe. It required a leap of faith. A big leap. Okay, said Jasper, taking the assignment. That jackrabbit jerk will be jiggling, will be jiggling jello. Enough with the tongue twisters, I said. Just jump, I urged him. He did a magnificent flying flip and landed on Anakin's ear. When he got to work, burrowing into one ear, then jumping quickly over to the other, Anakin, Anakin's ear twitched back and forth like a metronome at a rock concert. Whew. It is Anakin. Wait a minute. Here we go. Here he is. There he is. Jumping back and forth on Anakin. And Anakin, there he is with the with um, Jasper jumping from ear to ear. It is Anakin, said Denise. Look at his ears. That's exactly what he did when he saw Fletcher before. He's scared of Fletcher. That's right, said Isabella. The jig is up, said Gwen, tapping her braces. R James's rabbit has to be Anakin. His twitching ears prove it. James took Anakin. Ms. Neville looked at James. I do remember Anakin's ears twitching when he first saw Fletcher. I believe it is Anakin, James. I think it's time for you to tell the truth. James wouldn't look her in the eye. All right, he said. I heard Gwen and Jill talking about a new snow globe, and I already had come up with the idea of an all-white snow globe. I couldn't believe my brother's friends would come up with an even better ideas. That's when I saw their classroom rabbit, and I knew he'd be perfect. I didn't know the dog would. There's the picture of James confessing. Their dog would be blamed. I was going to return the rabbit to the classroom on Monday. Monday would have been too late, said Jill. We might have taken Fletcher back to the pound. Even I wouldn't want that, said Denise. You know what? The more I see him, the more I think Fletcher's the only dog I'm not afraid of. I wagged my little tail and gave her a big smile. Very shyly, she touched me on the ear. Oh, that's good. Hey, giggled Jasper. That tickles. But of course, Denise couldn't hear him. No humans can hear a flea. They barely listen to me, and we dolls are closer to humans than any other animal. Gwen and Jill, said Miss Neville, I owe you an apology. Maybe next one day next week you can bring Fletcher in for another geography lesson. As for you, James, you are disqualified, and I will speak to your teacher and see you and your parents in school on Monday. Uh oh, James is in trouble. Fletcher, you're saved, said Jill, putting her arms around me. Thanks to Gwen and my good detective work. Well, the truth was that I had done the detecting, and Jasper had done the work. Still, let Gwen and, and Jill take the credit. How do I love Jill and her best friend, Gwen? Gwen, let me count the ways. Jill gave me a good home. Gwen gave me my name. How, could any other dog ask for anything? Could a, a dog ask for anything more? Well, yes, a little salami. And a loyal flea who loves tongue twisters. It's a good life. Oh, I like that. That's the end of our story, my friends. Mm, mm, mm. Here is the last picture. And here's the picture of the author. Oh, nope, I'm lying to you. Here's a picture of the author, Elizabeth Levy. And here's a picture of Mordecai Gernstein. He is the illustrator. Hmm, interesting. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed that story. My next story 
is going to be, let me see if I can get this thing. Oops. Ready? My Awesome Summer by P. M. No, P. Mantis. Wearing Mantis. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I will talk to you soon. I miss you guys so much. But I'm glad we're having some time off and some time home. I'll talk to you soon. Oops, I'm getting very clumsy.